Hey folks, so while uh, I was working on some of these uh, repro guys, I thought it would actually be interesting uh, to, to do a, a small video on well, how I go about making this repro and what's involved and and uh, how much work is required and all that kind of stuff because um, uh, some people actually thought uh, what I was doing was replacing, reburning new ROM into these things, which is not at all the case. So these uh, custom chips here, there's a one here, there's a more on the third board, there's one here, one here, uh, essentially are sort of integrated um, TTL logic. Um, so one of these chips contains many of these, essentially, that's what it is. Uh, it just uh, obfuscates a, a bit of, you know, the, the workings of the board, make things a bit smaller as well and tidier. Um, but here is a case of, uh, well, we've all these repros and when they go, well, the only way to find another one is to take them from another board, which is not an ideal scenario. So luckily these are, these are true whole technology, so we can actually make them uh, with SMD components. It's a bit harder. You probably have to go to, to the uh, FPGA route, but then soldering would be a problem. So here it's a lot easier. So this is where um, a board like this, which is a bootleg uh, Kung Fu Master, comes in handy because uh, these uh, these guys were um, well essentially reverse engineered and all the logic containing those repros usually usually is somewhere here so they look very different at first let me just put them side by side here uh, but if we look a bit closer we get some similarities so um, for this one for instance for this board here I was lucky that uh, I had this subboard, so I was uh, the subboard was actually over here like that. So all I did was retrace all this and uh, make it a smaller, smaller version of it, which was, you know, easy enough. But looking at the, uh, let's go back to the, the boards. Looking at the both boards here, so we've the top board that handles the final graphics and uh, and colors and all that kind of stuff. Here we have. Uh, our main CPU and the, the the program stuff and the music as well. And if we look at the uh, some of the uh, layout, we can see here we've got those three big chips and our CPU. And indeed here we've got those three big chips and our CPU. We got ROMs here, two ROMs, more ROMs, um, and the layout for anti-ROMs. And we get a similar layout here, different ROM size, but this is exactly the same layout and same amount of uh, sp spots here. Uh, if we go in more details, we can see all these, this, this, uh, this batch of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then three here. We get that same layout here and here as well. We get these uh, three chips here, exactly the same layout. So it's not hard to guess that the layout is pretty much the same and you can pretty much use the schematics from this, uh, or from, uh, sorry, this to fix these bootlegs in this case. Uh, but there's more stuff. There's all this uh, area here, which I'm not sure about. Uh, if we look at this uh, this um, board here, we get well those uh, six chips are here. Uh, we get these three that are actually here. This guy, I'm not sure what it is. And uh, uh, I was uh, I was looking at the. There's not a lot of traces coming in and out. And I'll I'll, I'll come back to this in a while. But uh, we have our two rams and. ROMs, uh, which are uh, the ROMs are here, and the RAMs are actually here, and we get those three chips beside the RAM, which are here. So, some of these, actually, interestingly, we get those six uh, LS one six six, which is the uh, the same as the custom or the uh, the the the, um, the subboard for the custom. So, uh, safe to assume that these are the uh, this is uh, this chip, this custom, which is. Uh, 6166 but we have all these here that are uh, kind of unknown purpose um, if we look at the layout we got these these three chips which are actually here and these two are these guys so we've got eight eight chips here that have some purpose or so, some uh, s s some logic to them that is probably one of the repro so this is where I started looking at the, the position and, uh, and what goes what, and we need to start looking at the schematics at this stage. But um, you can see that this uh, custom will go into, you know, if some of the RAM, some of the, uh, some of these, some of these guys. So it's a matter of really of retracing um, where all the pins here go. Uh, which 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 um, ICs they go they come from or go to, 
and then finding the equivalent on this. So it's a lot of tracing. But let's let's go to the computer and uh, look at the schematics and uh, what the next step is. Okay, so I'm at my computer here and I've got the uh, the page for the top board, the schematics for the top board. There's a few um, um, degrees of uh, difficulty here because you can see that a lot of the text is faded. So I had to do a lot of just double checking and, and seeing where everything was going on the original and just uh, well writing it back just to see for sake of clarity because otherwise I couldn't really read anything but so the first step for me is to really just double check so in case of this IC which was the one I did with the, the, the help of the subboard just double check that it, it matches the schematic so um, this was the second one and in this case I can see that it's in an area uh, where those rams, uh, rams are it's going to these uh, 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 color proms we got all these uh, chips here. So, looking at the schematics, it it uh, this is indeed this one. Uh, we got those RAMs, we got those color proms, and then a few other um, discrete uh, ICs. So the next step is to identify some of the uh, some of the chips that all these lines are going to, and then just reverse the path back uh, to where these are going on the bootleg. For instance, here this custom uh, is going to these uh, RAMs here. So I'm going to check the, these pins on the RAMs uh, here and see where these guys are going. Uh, essentially that's all it is. It's, it's, it's simple reverse engineering in a way, but uh, it's a matter of just tracing and see and looking where these are going. And for this I'm using this light box which, which is actually uh, is very handy uh, because you can see the, the traces on pretty much both sides. Um, or you can at least see the, see the shadow, but it just makes things a bit clearer. This is um, something I found at a was a car boot sale, but just uh, yeah, it, it makes your life so much easier. If you find one, just grab it because they're they're very very handy. Um, uh, without it, it gets dark really quickly, and your eyes start straining. It's just not the easiest. Um, actually, the camera here is picking the light better than my uh, my eyes. But you can see the difference in the mix. Anyway, so um, I'm using this just to trace back, and then essentially that's uh, that's what I'm doing here. Um, we have, for instance, this, this chip here is uh, this guy here, and uh, well, I'm not sure exactly where. Yeah, for example, this uh, pin 38 here, which on the custom is going to the color uh, color proms, and it's also going to to to. to yeah, it's going to some of these, uh, this IC here, which is, uh, the, uh, it's, oh yeah, the LS85 at 2F, so the LS85 at 2F, actually, it's not going to help me. So if we look 2F on the, on this board, this is this guy and that happens to be this guy here so at this stage it's a matter of uh, looking okay this is we're looking at pin 10 uh, i think yeah yeah and then uh, just tracing pin 10 and see where it goes and indeed it goes to one of these and in this case it was this guy so it, that's really what it is it's just uh, tracing back a lot of the stuff that's already been done on the on the on the uh, bootlegs Okay, so once you've identified each of these pins and which uh, which one of these ICs is which pin essentially, uh, then you need to go um, well back to the individual ICs one by one and see where all the other pins on these ICs are connected because not all of the pins are connected directly to one of the the pins. Um, uh, the, well, the, the custom legs essentially. So um, here, for instance, we have uh, pin four is going to is going to pin seven of this guy. So um, it's you, you do pretty much the same stuff for each each, each of these uh, ICs. So you get your multimeter and you just check for continuity. Actually, I should have said that earlier, but uh, this is where this board came in handy. But um, this was just a convenience I had. It was uh, mostly unpopulated. This was a donor board that was beyond repair. Uh, in this case it was just very handy and, and using this as well because I could see you know some of the pins and uh, easily identify it just sped up the process but I identify some of the um, the legs were connected together and tied and that kind of stuff. So it's uh, it's tedious it's long but it's obviously you need to do it. It's not complicated though. Uh, but what you do is just get a multimeter and then apply one uh, end of the terminal 
uh, here and then just literally just uh, either visually look where the trace is going and just double check or if you can't see just probe um, each of the legs individually sometimes. Once you've done that you should normally have a, a full circuit for this, uh, this IC. Uh, you've identified where each leg is going on this uh, section of the circuit which is our IC, our custom IC. Um, and now it's it's time to well print it um, or, or, or make the, the circuit itself. Uh, so here from Easy Idea it's easy, you can actually just convert into a PCB. And then you can either auto trace, which is what I've done here in this case. The, it's got actually the, the auto trace uh, engine got a lot better uh, over the past few months really. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's become quite good. And I've used that here and it works. So. Um, so this is layer, this is the top layer and the bottom layer here, so all the layers together. You put your just solder mask, top and bottom, and you, you end up with this guy. Um, so from here you can actually, sorry I should have said, you can actually just order, generate the fabrication file and order it directly. Uh, and it goes to GLC PCB. But it's not an app for them, but this is what I've done and uh, you end up with this and uh, now you need to uh, just, well, solder. And uh, the stuff. Once everything is done, and this is the uh, this is the end end product here, and uh, this little uh, IC here. You can see I had made a couple of mistakes, not in the uh, version I showed you, but in my um, initial version uh, of uh, of these schematics, I had missed a couple of uh, just grounding legs. Come on, focus. Uh, a couple of uh, a grounded um, legs, which I'm not sure which one they were now. But a couple of them were going to ground, so this is what I've done here, just to put a, a couple of it. Come on. Um, a couple of them just going to ground. There's one underneath here and one here. Um, and this is the uh, this is the heartbreaking part. The first version, well, there's chances it's it's not gonna work. Uh, unless you're very good, which I'm not. So uh, uh, so you you test it and uh, Typically, typically the errors you see on the screen aren't going to tell you, you know, what's wrong, so you need to go back to the schematics and just double check uh, every single line, which is what I've done. I spent two extra evenings uh, on this guy. So all in all, it's, it's, it's quite a bit of work. It's quite a bit of work. Um, it's more tedious than complicated, though, and, uh, and it's, it's worth it because those uh, customs, you know, aren't... Uh, are, aren't available anymore and it's good to have repros. So the next step here, uh, for instance, is to make a repro of uh, this guy, which might be available uh, by the time you, you see this video. Uh, so I've got this one done, this one done, and this one done, and I've already identified on the circuit, again, just using similarities. Let me get the uh, original, the, well, the original, the fully populated uh, bootleg uh, back here. But I've already identified, you can see the color that these eight chips uh, are responsible for replicating this custom. So we're going to do the same stuff here, just uh, retrace, uh, see where, uh, which, which of these pins uh, is in here, and then where all these guys are connected together. And I've, uh, I've started, uh, started already, I'm making good progress. I think I'm only, I'm halfway through, I still have these four to check where all their legs are going to um, but by the time you see the video hopefully it'll be uh, it'll be available it'll be working stuff <laughs> even better it'll be working um, but there you go this is what goes into making uh, mid these it, it's not overly complicated it's just tedious and uh, and uh, yeah tedious that's really all it is uh, folks, I hope this was of some interest anyway, um, um, I just thought that, well first explain what it is that these repros are, um, they're not ROMs, it's not a simple matter of just burning, getting a ROM from somewhere and burning it, this is not a program, it's an integrated uh, circuit, or an integrated chip, um, and uh, and uh, yeah, I hope this was of, uh, of some interest, uh, don't forget uh, all the social media stuff, Instagram, Twitter, uh, there's a Patreon page if you want to help the channel, and uh, maybe, you know, get a couple of these. Uh, anyway folks, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.